Hello. Is Treyer there? I am. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Uh, this is the first episode of the City of Dogs podcast. Um, and I am Ken Foster. I'm a writer who often writes about dogs. And I'm with Treyer Scott, who is a photographer of many animals, including sometimes human animals. And <laughs> we uh, did a collaboration together called City of Dogs, uh, which explored the neighborhoods of New York City through dogs and their people. And um, and now we're sort of revisiting that in the weird climate that we're in, in the midst of a pandemic in which um, no, now even even dogs aren't allowed to interact <laughs> according to the new CDC guidelines that I think came out yesterday. Um, and so it's made us think about about this experience we had where we spent months traveling around New York City and interacting with groups of people and dogs in this wonderful world that seems to be hopefully just on pause. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to be revisiting that today in this conversation, as well as uh, in future episodes in which I will be talking with a variety of subjects who were all part of our book um, and and finding out what people are doing and how people are feeling and how people's dogs are most likely, I imagine, helping them through this strange time that we're in. Um, so, so let's talk about what the world used to be like. <laughs> mm. I, I miss, I miss that world a lot. Um, I, I think there are so many things that, that we used to, well, obviously that all of us took for granted as simple, simple things going, going for a walk in a park with your family and your dog, going to a dog park, um, going to a store, <laughs> going out to eat. And, um, that all seems far away now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, even now when I'm like driving out to get supplies, as we now call things that we just used mm. to normally shop for, <laughs> um, but I'll see people walking their dog in full, you know, protective gear um, and think about how I used to, you know, those are the people that I used to run across the street and introduce myself to just because I wanted to introduce myself to their dogs and that yep. doesn't seem at all possible anymore i know um, me too yeah the other day i posted on on instagram this amazing picture i took from my car window of someone walking really being dragged down the street by their two dogs um with their mask on and i was just like this is now the way the world is it's kind of crazy um and one of the things that i used to always say and that inspired the city of dogs book that we did together is you know how dogs bring people together um mm -hmm. dogs are like a social catalyst because they are so social themselves like it's hard to be truly alone and to not be part of your community if you have a dog because your dog always wants to meet people Absolutely. your dog makes you become friends with people that maybe you wouldn't normally have ever become friends with you know <laughs> and i feel um, like we're so disarmed when we're around dogs and i'm you know as we found in making the book it's it's so easy to make friends when you when you have the the common love of dogs right you can talk to anybody when the conversation begins around a dog um yep. yeah and so that was one of the great joys of the experience we had driving around the five boroughs and discovering neighborhoods that we wouldn't have gone into or had mm -hmm. any avenue to really comfortably speak to people except that we were there to talk about their dogs you know Definitely. um and it was an amazing experience i think for both of us in ways that we couldn't have imagined uh before we actually did it absolutely i um, i was amazed uh, as, as i've mentioned before i mean you know we we met so many people making this book and and explored you know what felt like every corner of of new york city and i felt so 
so lucky to be able to do that, to, to be able to see parts of the city that, that many people who have lived there their whole lives have never even seen. And, but what surprised me the most, I think was, was just all the friends we made people across all, um, you know, all professions, all socioeconomic levels. And we all just loved each other and became such good friends because, because we came together over the love of dogs. And, um, it's, I, I was just, constantly on, on the sort of high of, of, you know, I love people. And I, I love New York city. And that's not very, um, normal for me. So it was a very <laughs> You're right, uplifting it's experience. No, it's not. I, it, it really, it made me, it just filled me with joy every time we did one of these photo shoots, because it just, um, it brought, brought us together with people that we might otherwise never have met. And it, and it was all just centered around, um, you know, the shared love of dogs. What are some of the sort of uh, scenes or experiences or interactions that really sort of stick out to you, especially now after both the passage of time and the lockdown that we're all oh. now a part of? So many. I mean, in looking back through the book, I mean, I just, I feel such longing actually, because every single one of these locations I can't go to now, you know, n nobody can really. And, um, I, I feel connected to, to every single subject that we, that, that we have in the book. I mean, I think some of the ones that, that have always really stood out to me is, um, the IAC building, for example, um, you know, that spectacular, building and and a whole team you know a whole office a whole team of people that that all brought their dogs to work and and you know we spent a couple of wonderful days there meeting everybody and photographing dogs in that spectacular architecture and and having some interesting adventures with um corporate you know um, corporate adventures bureaucracy. i guess <laughs> bureaucracy <laughs> yes um you know, there's just every single shoot well, that we, and, yeah. And ahead. that building, I imagine now, is just sitting there completely right. empty. Yes. Yeah. And those people are hopefully working from home with their dogs at home instead of right. at work with their dogs at work. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's imagining all those empty buildings. Uh, so many very... empty buildings, all of those beautiful, you know, all of the beautiful architecture of New York City, all of the, the buildings that you go by in your car or on the train and you wonder, um, you know, what, what sort of lives are being led in, inside of them. And, um, now, you know, so many of them are empty. And then the ones that are homes and apartments, I mean, everyone's just, just waiting in a holding pattern, you know, and, and so I feel like it's, um, a lot of the, there's a lot of loneliness even amongst the, the buildings in the city. Yeah. Yeah. I also think about, um, I mean, some of the, some of the ones that come to mind first, I think are the ones where we did groups of people or mm. organizations or institutions or, um, and so I keep thinking about Rikers, which oh, yeah. was an amazing experience to be able to go spend a day there and see the amazing work that some of the inmates were doing with um training dogs but that was so um, incredible but imagining like what's going on there now uh is is something i don't want to imagine actually <laughs> you know do you do you um, actually know if they still have the is the dog training program still active now i want to i don't know i i'm imagining not because they're probably limiting the in and right. out. Um, and there were some news reports of it, there being yeah. some infection there. So yeah. that would probably, I imagine, put a pause on a lot of their programs for, sure. um, you know, rehabilitation or enrichment or whatever you might want to call it while people are there, which was just going to make it a much more miserable place for everybody. Um, well, exactly. Also, I mean, with I've... the courts on freeze, so people are stuck in oh. whatever part of the process they might be in. So um, yeah. And then, of course, the airport where we visited with the um, the dogs that live and work at the airport, which, I mean, I guess there's still they're probably... <laughs> well, I mean, the, there's still some flights, especially if of sure. supplies and things coming in and out. Um, so they're still working, but I imagine... 
they must have to, you know, sort of come up with something for them to do just to keep them busy and engaged and in yeah, shape. Yeah, there's got to be a lot more enrichment and exercise going on for those Malinois because they sure need it and they're probably not working nearly as much as they were. Yeah, they can do that. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that we saw them do there um, in the package handling area was um, they get thrown a package that is intentionally scented just to keep them on their toes. <laughs> so I they imagine there, there are a lot more uh, decoy packages being thrown. Right. <laughs> the dogs um, get so excited when they when they find something. It's wonderful. That was a great yeah. experience to watch them work. But we also, with individual people, you know, got to go really interact in the neighborhoods, which, yes. again, interaction is not allowed anymore. Um, you know, Lydia, who is an amazing dog trainer, took us into Central Park in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also, um, you know, went around the Bronx with one of my favorite families in there pack of dogs <laughs> so much time in the bronx actually um i know a little italy oh, um, i miss it I, I think about little italy so much and i miss it and city island and all of the wonderful neighborhoods that we discovered um everywhere but particularly in the bronx i think i know the, the bronx as you know is my favorite borough yeah. um but um yeah and i think about our friends on city island whose dog um you know, passed away after mm -hmm. the book came out and they have a new dog who I keep seeing on social media. Um, they have and a new I imagine. Dog? Yeah. His name is so Leroy, excited. I believe. Thanks. I know. I know. So I can't wait to talk to them and see how they're doing and hear all the stories that I'm sure they have about their new dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So this is what, we will be doing in the coming episodes. Um, what other things are you thinking about? I'm curious. Um, I mean, one I thing just... that I, well, sorry, I just interrupted you no, after asking a question. Well, one <laughs> of the things that I was just talking with someone the other day about the dog parks being closed mm -hmm. um, and when is the right time to reopen the dog parks in in whatever the process becomes of reopening New York City. Um, and, and there's been a lot of debate, I think, among dog people about that question. Um, but at the same time, I know from my experience post 9-11 in Manhattan when I lived there and also in New Orleans after Katrina, you know, the dog community coming back really felt like an important piece in life coming back to normal. Right. Um, you know, there are friends you can make and bonds you can make and communication that can occur and resource sharing, which is incredibly important, um, that occurs just from being able to, you know, at, be w at least within six feet of other dog owners. <laughs> right. Um, and so that's a part of the story that I think we all need to be talking about um, in anticipation of, of when we get to that point. Um. I think there are so many pieces, so many little things that um, again, that I think probably went unappreciated previous to the pandemic that as they start coming back, um, there'll be little markers of normalcy and joy that start to reenter our lives. You know, like you said, I, I think dog parks reopening, could be a part of that. I think every, everybody probably has different little, little pieces that might be meaningful for them, you know, Starbucks reopening or, um, your local sushi restaurant or, or whatever it is. You know, I think there, there are little, very little things that will be very momentous and start bringing the community back together. And I know as a parent, um, you know, this is really, really tough on, on young children because they're, they're not getting any social interaction and, um, except over Zoom. And I know my, my daughter is lonely. You know, she's an only child. And one of the things that has really kept her, um, happy and occupied is our, is our dogs. And I imagine that's the case for a lot of people. Um, I'm so glad that 
that we have them. I'm so glad that so many people have opened their homes to, to foster dogs during this time and um, hopefully gotten, you know, company and joy from them during this kind of lonely, isolated time. And when things start opening up again, it will be um, wonderful to rejoin the world and for our dogs to rejoin with us. Yeah. Yeah. I <clears throat> my, um, one of my dogs, just to acknowledge that I do live with a house full of dogs. Mm -hmm. um, but Douglas was being very weird and uh, anxiety ridden during the first weeks of the uh, quarantine. I'm trying to think what the word is for what we're in. Yeah. <laughs> it's become normal. Um, but I suddenly realized one day that it was because he spends most of his day sitting in my bedroom staring out the window into this yard behind ours where there usually are German shepherds all day long and the German shepherds have been brought inside. Right. So he was so, so disturbed by the fact that this thing that he spent all his time looking at and occasionally barking in the direction of was now missing, <laughs> you know, I know. Um, I, um, and I was like, one even, of my dogs, sorry, go ahead. Oh, just like just even something as as um, subtle as that, it seems like a huge rip in the fabric of our day. Um, it, it does. One of my dogs sits at the window all day, actually, and watches the street. She watches the people walk by, and we have a lot of foot traffic and cars, and and there's absolutely nothing for her to see now. There's nobody out there. There's no cars, and she seems so disappointed every time she goes to sit in the window, but. Um, Thankfully, you know, one, one of the interesting things is I think people with dogs, I mean, obviously, no matter what happens, you still have to keep walking your dog. And um, in a lot of places where there have been very heavy restrictions and shelter in place, you know, people are allowed to walk their dogs, um, but not allowed to do much else. And so I've I've actually felt very grateful for um the fact that I do still need to walk my dogs every day because it's, it's a great excuse and a necessity to get out and get exercise and get air. And, um, you know, an acceptable thing to do because it's, it's, you know, there's just not an alternative. You have, you have to walk your dogs. So, um, I'm, gr I'm grateful for that chore, I think during, during this time. Yeah. Yeah. Routine. Anything that is routine is, is helpful. <laughs> Anything Even a normal that's routine time, and gets having you a routine is, is a good thing, helpful. but it's good when everything else seems to be changing to still have to take your dog out to poop. Um, well, it's also which a I great really way. realized also the value of after nine eleven when you know felt in the hours and immediate days after that like we were all paralyzed, but our dog still needed to go to the bathroom. Um, right. And it's kind of a constant. And there was a time during this, I think it's fading now, but where, you know, people were kind of being shamed for going outside, getting exercise, jogging, hiking. Um, but if you had, you know, you have to walk your dog, you have to walk your dog. So I felt like no matter what was going on, that was, it was a way for me to be able to get outside and um, not feel guilty about it because it just, it's a necessity. So you put on your mask and you, and you get the leashes and you head out. Well, on that note, I think we all uh, need to either head out with our dogs or head <laughs> to our kids' Zoom session or <laughs> or to work if we're lucky enough to be working from home. Um, but I will be talking to you again and also talking right. to a number of people that we met along the way um, when we were doing City of Dogs. And finding out what their neighborhoods are doing, how they're doing, how their dogs are doing. Um, and also working a few extra special guests in that were not part of the book necessarily, but Ooh. who have some things to say on the subject. Um, and so I hope whoever is listening um, will come back to listen again as we continue this discussion among many others to come. Sounds great. I can't wait. Thank you for taking the time today, Treyer. My pleasure. It feels Thank like as if we're me. almost in the same place, even though you are in 
Almost. Rhode Island and I am in New York. <laughs> but um, but that's the great thing about technology is we can still Indeed. feel a little bit connected. So thanks. Say hello to your family and your dogs. And, Give all and your I will dogs talk a to kiss you soon. for me. Every single <laughs> okay. one of them? Every single <laughs> okay. one of them. I don't know if I have that much time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I will. So Okay. Bye. <laughs>